Back in the 1960s, airplanes were already changing how we travel. But Boeing wasn't satisfied. They dreamed of something twice as big as anything flying at the time. Engineers were told to create a jet that could carry more people, fly longer distances, and do what no plane had done before. Most people said it was impossible, but Boeing did it anyway. That dream became the Boeing 747, a jet that didn't just carry passengers, but redefined global travel. It connected cities across oceans, brought families together, and introduced the world to long-haul flying at a new scale. But behind the beauty of its design and the roar of its engines are secrets most people never hear, like why the hump on its head exists, how it carried over 1,000 people on one flight, and how it once flew for over 20 hours without stopping. This isn't just the story of a plane, it's the story of human ambition, engineering courage, and unexpected greatness. So in this video, let's explore 10 powerful secrets about the Boeing 747, the queen of the skies, that will change the way you see this flying giant forever. The bump that was never meant to be. When people see a 747, they instantly recognize it because of that bump on top. It looks elegant, even royal, like a crown sitting on the queen of the skies. But that bump, it was never meant to become iconic. Back in the 1960s, Boeing engineers believed that supersonic jets, like the Concorde, would soon replace normal planes. So the 747 was built as something temporary. The plan was to use it for cargo later on. To do that, they needed the nose of the aircraft to open wide like a giant mouth. But there was one problem. The cockpit, where the pilots sit, would be in the way of the nose opening. So engineers came up with a clever fix. Lift the cockpit above the cargo door. That design created the hump. What started as a quick solution turned into one of the most recognizable airplane shapes in the world. But the story gets even more interesting. Because of this bump, Boeing created a special passenger experience. In some models, the nose section actually had seats in front of the pilots. Passengers in that area could feel the flight like no one else. Imagine sitting at the front of a 200-ton jet, watching the runway disappear under your feet, even ahead of the pilots. Today, most planes have boring, flat designs, but the 747's hump is a reminder that sometimes, unplanned ideas lead to unforgettable results. The fastest jumbo ever built. Even though the 747 first flew in 1969, it still holds a record. It's the fastest subsonic passenger jet ever built. That means it flies just below the speed of sound and still outruns many modern jets today. The 747 cruises at Mach 0.85. That's about 564 miles per hour at altitude. Newer planes like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner or the Airbus A350 may be more fuel efficient but none of them are faster than the 747 in regular service. Want proof? In February 2020, a British Airways 747 flying from New York to London hit a strong jet stream. It completed the entire journey in just four hours and 56 minutes, one of the fastest subsonic commercial flights ever recorded. That's nearly Concorde speed, without breaking the sound barrier. And here's the most amazing part. Boeing engineers in the 1960s designed this plane using slide rules, pencils, and paper, not the computers we rely on today. This shows how far ahead of its time the 747 really was. Its speed, design, and power still impress pilots and engineers over 50 years later. The flight that saved over 1,000 lives. In May 1991, a deadly civil war was starting in Ethiopia. Thousands of Ethiopian Jews were at risk. Israel decided to act quickly. They launched Operation Solomon, a secret mission to rescue as many people as possible. The tool for the mission? A modified Boeing 747. El Al Airlines removed most of the seats from one of their 747s, turning it into a flying shell. The goal was to fit as many people as possible. It wasn't about comfort, it was about survival. By the time the plane took off, 1,088 people were on board. That's more than double the usual capacity. And during the flight, two babies were born, bringing the total to 1,090 passengers, a world record that still stands today. Flying such a heavy load wasn't easy. The crew had to calculate every detail carefully, from balance to fuel usage. The pilots flew with extreme precision, knowing they were carrying lives. 
not just luggage. The mission was a success. The 747 landed safely in Israel, proving that this aircraft wasn't just about speed or distance. It was about strength and trust. That flight became one of the greatest rescue operations in aviation history. And it was only possible because of the unique structure and design of the 747. The cockpit was like a mechanical orchestra. Step inside the cockpit of a first-generation Boeing 747, and you'll feel like you're in a control room from a science fiction movie. There were no touchscreen displays or computer screens. Everything was real. Switches, knobs, gauges, and buttons. In fact, there were 971 mechanical controls inside. Flying the 747 wasn't a solo job. It needed three people, the pilot, the co-pilot, and the flight engineer. While the pilots flew the plane, the flight engineer controlled systems like fuel, hydraulics, air pressure, and electricity. Every part had to work together, like instruments in an orchestra. This made flying the 747 a skillful and human experience. Pilots had to know their aircraft deeply. They didn't rely on autopilot. They relied on their training, instinct, and teamwork. Many veteran pilots say the 747 was the most rewarding plane to fly. Because it wasn't just about pushing buttons, it was about feeling connected to the aircraft. The gamble that could have destroyed Boeing. In 1966, Boeing took a risk that could have ended everything. At that time, no company had ever built something as massive as the 747. But Boeing believed the future of air travel needed something bold, something that could carry hundreds of passengers across the world in one go. So they bet the entire company on the 747. They invested over $1 billion into designing and building the aircraft. In today's money, that's more than $9 billion. It was more than Boeing's entire value back then. If the 747 failed, Boeing would go bankrupt. And the challenges didn't stop at the design. The aircraft was so big that no existing building could fit its parts. So Boeing built a new factory, the Everett plant in Washington state, which became the largest building by volume in the world. Inside that giant hangar, a team of engineers worked around the clock. They called themselves the Incredibles because what they were trying to do had never been done before. From the first blueprint to the first test flight, they completed the entire aircraft in just 28 months. It was a miracle of teamwork and vision, and in the end, the gamble paid off. The 747 became a success, and Boeing didn't just survive, it dominated the skies for the next five decades. The double-decker dream that didn't make it. In the early designs, Boeing engineers actually imagined the 747 with two full-length decks, like a flying skyscraper. The idea was to maximize passenger space and make the plane more profitable. But then came the challenge, safety. The FAA had a rule. In case of emergency, all passengers had to evacuate the plane in under 90 seconds. With two full floors and just a few exits, it was impossible. People couldn't get out fast enough. So Boeing changed the design. Instead of a full second floor, they added a partial upper deck at the front, just enough space for a small lounge or extra seating. It was a smart compromise. Not only did it keep the plane safe and certified, but it also gave the 747 its signature hump. And because the cockpit sat above the main deck, the nose could open wide for cargo, a feature that helped the 747 transition easily from passenger jet to freighter. What started as a failed idea turned into a design genius. Painting the giant isn't just for looks. Most people don't think twice about airplane paint. But on a 747, it's a huge deal, literally. Painting a Boeing 747 takes about 120 gallons of paint. That adds up to around 1,200 pounds of extra weight. And in aviation, even a few extra pounds can cost thousands of dollars in fuel over time. So painting a jumbo jet isn't just about style, it's a science. Before the new coat is applied, the old paint is completely stripped away, revealing the shiny aluminum underneath. This also gives engineers a chance to inspect the body for cracks, corrosion, or damage hidden beneath the surface. Then comes the careful layering process. In a special climate-controlled hangar, painters use equipment to apply the primer and color in thin, even coats. 
every layer must dry before the next one is added. The process can take up to two weeks from start to finish. And when it's time to choose a design, airlines don't just think about branding. Some go for lightweight, minimal designs to save on fuel. Others go bold. British Airways once painted their 747s in retro liveries, showing off designs from past decades. Qantas created an Aboriginal-inspired design called Woonala Dreaming, turning the plane into a flying piece of art. Because of its massive surface area and gentle curves, the 747 became more than just a jet. It became a moving canvas in the sky. The 20-hour flight that shocked everyone. In 1989, Qantas did something no one thought was possible. They flew a Boeing 747 from London to Sydney, non-stop. That's over 11,000 miles. The aircraft was a specially prepared 747-400. Engineers removed extra seats and equipment, added fuel tanks, and minimized the weight. No passengers. Just a small crew, fuel, and determination. The flight took 20 hours and 9 minutes. It wasn't a commercial flight, but it proved something important, that the 747 had hidden range capabilities. Even Boeing hadn't expected it to fly that far in one go. Years later, newer planes like the A350 and 787 would make ultra-long haul flights more common. But back in 1989, it was the 747 that did it first, without fanfare, but with pure engineering muscle. That flight changed what airlines thought was possible. And it showed once again, the 747 was always ahead of its time. The plane that carried a space shuttle. Most airplanes carry passengers or cargo. But the Boeing 747? It carried something far more unbelievable. A space shuttle. Yes, NASA turned two 747s into shuttle carrier aircraft. These jumbo jets were modified to carry space shuttles on their backs, piggyback style. To do that, NASA engineers stripped the inside of the plane, reinforced its body, and added extra stabilizers to the tail. These changes made sure the aircraft could stay balanced, even with an 80-ton space shuttle sitting on top. From 1977 to 2012, these 747s completed 87 shuttle ferry missions, flying shuttles like Discovery and Endeavour across the US. They couldn't launch the shuttle into space, but they played a critical role in moving it from landing sites back to launch pads. People on the ground would look up and see a spaceship riding a jet. It looked like science fiction, but it was real. And the only reason it worked? The 747 was strong, stable, and trusted. No other commercial plane could have done this job. That's how powerful and versatile the Queen of the Skies truly was. More than just a plane. Over the years, the Boeing 747 flew more than 7 billion people. Nearly the population of the entire planet. But its impact can't be measured by numbers alone. It carried families across oceans. It brought aid during disasters. It was the stage for honeymoons, goodbyes, reunions, and life-changing journeys. It served as Air Force One, carrying presidents to historic moments. Even in movies, books, and children's drawings, the 747 became a symbol of freedom, adventure, and connection. Pilots who flew the 747 often said it didn't just feel like flying a plane. It felt like flying a cathedral in the sky. Passengers on the upper deck described it as a private lounge, something magical they never forgot. And now, as airlines begin retiring their last 747s, something is changing. Air travel is faster, cheaper, and more digital. But that sense of wonder? That's harder to find. Saying goodbye to the 747 isn't just the end of an aircraft. It's the end of an era when flying felt rare, special, and human. What's your favorite Boeing 747 memory? Or which of these secrets surprised you the most? Tell us in the comments. And if you love stories where engineering meets emotion, don't forget to subscribe. Because legends may retire, but their stories, they'll keep flying.